Um, to Scott, for a uh, brand new take on an old favourite, do you oh, want to, yeah. um, really interesting research, do you want to share yours? I really yours? like that, um, that segue, mm -hmm. I really like that. Um, really um, enjoyed listening to uh, both of you talk about the research. I uh, want to kind of come at it through maybe a different angle. Um, trying to bring back, so first of all I want to say I think achieve, achievement is overrated um, in our society and, uh, and I think goal achievement is overrated. Um, so if that's a taboo thing to say here in this room, uh, <laughs> n sorry, not sorry. Um, but um, uh, I, what I'm trying to do, my, my, uh, my research program is trying to bring back a psychology that existed in the 50s and 60s called humanistic psychology that um, just is not, uh, these people like Abraham Maslow, Carl Rogers, uh, Charlotte Bueller, um, even the psychoanalyst Karen Horney, you know, who was really challenged Freud, and they, they have such brilliant ideas about what it means to uh, for being and becoming. And I'm trying to um, to uh, realize a field that Maslow wanted to realize, but he died uh, uh, suddenly of a heart attack at the age of 62 with so much of his ideas that people don't know um, unrealized, and that's the psychology of being. Um, I think we focus too much on doing in our society. And I think more important than achievement is helping people um, constantly grow towards becoming uh, the best version of themselves. And I think that's good enough. That's a good enough life um, if you're constantly growing towards. Um, I see growth mindset, um, I'm a bit critical of growth mindset, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in the sense I see so much of it applied in business and school in the way of like only achievement is what your growth mindset is towards, you know? And I have made the case that you can have a uh, growth mindset up the kazoo and um, uh, reach a goal through your growth mindset um, that is not right for you. You can reach a goal that doesn't realize the best version of yourself at all. And then what was the point of having the growth mindset? So I think that we don't really uh, view growth mindset in context uh, as much as I think we should. Um, how many of you have, uh, have heard of Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs? Oh, yay! Always a crowd plays up. That's great. Um, this, is the, uh, this is my revised hierarchy of needs. <laughs> but, um, so, done. <laughs> Talk over. Uh, no. Um, but I've been um, working uh, on revising the hierarchy of needs based on a modern day scientific foundation based off uh, you know, a lot of the great research you both talked about. And, um, but research, um, I've been trying to, original research I've been conducting trying to bring back um, the humanistic framework. Um, so I went through Maslow's 1943 article, The um, uh, Characteristics of Self-Actualizing People, and I was just curious how many of them stand the empirical scrutiny of modern day statistical methods. And I found that 10 of his 17 proposed characteristics can be measured and can be captured and um, predict uh, work satisfaction and even, uh, dare I say, work uh, supervisor ratings, like measures of achievement, better than so many of these other markers we have today. And a lot of these characteristics, um, you can take the, the test for free at selfactualizationtest.com. I'm not trying to sell anything, but I tried to put the test for free for everyone to take um, that's uh, scientifically validated to have these 10 different facets. Another thing I've been working on is just trying to um, uh, correct the record about what a lot of things Maslow said. Um, like I said, he died suddenly of a heart attack at the age of 62, and um, I've been on this mission to discover an unfinished theory. He actually would write things like, I can't stand people who think that self actual that I'm saying self-actualization is the pinnacle of my, uh, of my hierarchy, because it's not. Um, so he was very much working on a new theory of transcendence that, that uh, introductory psychology textbooks don't talk about. Um, everyone gets it wrong. Introductory management textbooks get it wrong. It turns out he never actually drew a pyramid. So that's another thing that most people don't know about. None of his published writings did he draw a pyramid. It was these management textbook folks, men uh, in the uh, 60s, who <laughs> decided to put the man with the flagpole at the top of a higher of a pyramid, you know? And that was like, they're like, this is what self-actualization looks like. <laughs> Maslow rolling over in his grave over that. He was very clear to say that human development is always a two steps forward, one step back dynamic. Um, we're constantly dealing with lots of needs at the same time, try to satisfy as many needs as possible at the same time. Um, like is not like a video game. It's not like you get uh, security needs met and then some voice from above is like, congrats, you've unlocked connection. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then you move up the Maslow hierarchy. Like Maslow, again, rolling in his grave for anyone that views, it, everyone treats it like it's a video game and it's not at all like that. He made that very clear. And then finally, you know, also, it wasn't even the hierarchy that, that people um, focused on, uh, that he focused on. Actually, what he cared most about was the distinction, and I think this maps on really nicely what you both are talking about, the distinction between deficiency needs and growth needs. So deficiency, when we're caught up in um, a deficiency uh, uh, state of mind, 
um, we try to make demands on the world. Our goals have a particular flavor to them. So they're like, love me, feed me, you know, respect me. We're trying to demand that others do these things to us. We're trying to fulfill this hole in ourselves. And in the growth realm, or what he called the being realm, the be realm of human existence, it's a whole different world. The, our outlook on the world d differs. When we're in the be realm of human existence, the question is not, you know, like, what can I do to reduce this deficiency within my soul? It's what can I do to, um, to integrate and become um, a whole person? And again, I, do have a, I, I um, talk about in the book how the gro Maslow's notion of growth um, uh, motivation is very different than growth mindset theory. Um, so growth motivation is actually about becoming and integrating yourself as a whole person. Again, a lot of people are shooting, um, I would say they're pseudo-growing, right? So they think that some one yoga pose is going to make them transcendent, you know, you know, see God, you know, or like one, um, you know, what they do, the call map, you know, in one minute a day, and suddenly they're superior to their friends, you know, in their, in their, in their, in their enlightenment. And that's not true, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we need to integrate um, our security, our safety. We need, it, what we do is we need to come to a real, and that's really what the humanist psychology is talking about, is a real integration of our whole being, you know? Where we take and we don't ignore that we have these esteem needs. And we, we have the need for self-esteem. We have the need for connection. We don't, we don't sweep that under the rug. We don't say that we're enlightened just because we achieve something. So many people are achieving and have, um, and, and, and I would say they're achieving on a very faulty foundation, you know? So um, I've been really working on this uh, revised hierarchy of needs. Um, I was uh, very tempted to show you the revised hierarchy of needs, but I feel like I'm running out of time. Um, but I have, no, a, I have a book, no, well, <laughs> it's oh, like. Give a round of applause. No. Thank you, thank you, How much time do I have? <laughs> yeah, no, I think you have enough time. All right, fine, you wanna see it? <laughs> okay, um, um, so this is coming out in a, in a book, um, coming out April 7th, and what I decided to do is I think a better metaphor than um, the, the sort of triangle is a sailboat. So when you have a sailboat, what you do is you're not trying to climb anything, it's you're a vehicle. And what you wanna do is you wanna create the best integrated vehicle you can to become the best version of yourself as you travel through the unknown waters of the world. So, um, uh, oh, did they pick the, <laughs> funnily enough, they picked the wrong slide to choose. <laughs> um, they didn't actually put my revised hierarchy of needs, they put a sailboat picture. <laughs> Oh. I had sent them the actual revised hierarchy of needs. This wasn't intentional. I actually intended on showing this to you. No. But um, I'll, just, I'll just describe it. And um, uh, <laughs> I actually was all excited to show it to you. I, 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 pr I promise. <laughs> this was not like a bait and switch. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so actually, so the triangle is still there, but that's the sail. So what you have is you need a boat of safety first. Okay? You really need to make sure that um, uh, you're as secure as possible in yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. So you've got your shit together, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you feel like you're, you're, you have friends, you have a support system, you feel like food over your head, you feel like you have adequate food. I talk a lot about the effects of food insecurity, um, and that's a really undervalued, under-discussed topic in psychology. Um, uh, connection, the need for connection. Once you feel really secure in that, then you feel safe to open that sail and be your authentic self and really travel. But you don't move that far in the ocean if that sail isn't open at all. Um, if that sail is fully open, but you but the boat is uh, leaky, right? That you're not going to travel that far either. So you really need kind of this integration of both these things. Um, and I did uh, I do have some different needs, but one of the needs that's relevant to this discussion is the need for purpose. And I, I put uh, need for purpose as um, the highest need um, before um, we can transcend ourselves. So purpose is kind of a bridge to. Um, the top now is transcendence, which is what Maslow really was trying to get to. Um, so that's in a nutshell. Awesome, a round of applause, thank you. Um, so I feel like um, the self-help movement today yeah. Um, yeah. would suggest that, you know, um, we should grow out of our pathologies, we should get better <laughs> and we should uh, improve upon, etc. Yeah. And it sounds like what you're saying is, as uh, in the revised hierarchy is actually Accepting and integrating is yes. the the um, the true measure of self-actualizing, not the 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 ongoing growth. Well, is I've definitely accurate? talked about how uh, we have way too many sort of self uh, self-enhanced help help like sections of the bookstore. We have nothing on like other help. You know, there's no like other help section of the bookstore. Like <laughs> no one seems to care about that. <laughs> it's yeah. like we're, we're me me me. Everyone's caught in deficiency goal mode. 
um, and especially in this climate we're living right now. I talk a lot about our political climate. I talk, I, calm down, I won't get into that uh, in too depth. But, um, <laughs> sorry, we'll have a pack attack. But <laughs> no politics, no religion. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> but, but again, also our religion, you know, we, um, I, I want to. <laughs> well, what did I just say? Well, Honestly, no, I'm just I, kidding. I, what, I, what I want is to democratize spirituality, mm. and I want to create a one world uh, humanity. Um, and that's really was Maslow's vision, um, and I try to present a, a way forward in that vision in this book. Nice. Can we have a couple of questions from the audience? Who has some, uh, actually, sir, did you want to go first? <laughs> and nothing's occurring to you yet? You had a really good one and I he cut you off, I'm so go. sorry. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Molly Rose, can we? Can you say more about transcendence? Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's, uh, I'll, t I'll tell you my definition of healthy transcendence. Uh, let's see if I can remember it, okay? Um, uh, the word for word. Um, so I talk about, and, and I, I say what's important is healthy transcendence, because I do say so many people today are transcend pseudo-transcending. Um, you know, let's be honest, you know, like, you have these disciples, people in power that are abusing their positions of power, but they say they're enlightened, you know? It's, it, that's not, they haven't integrated their deprivations, you know? So what does healthy transcendence look like? So I define it as um, the, uh, um, it's an emergent phenomenon uh, that results from the uh, full integration of the whole self in the service of realizing the good society. So that's how I define it. No, please don't ask me to say it again. I just like got in the flow state and said it, and I don't know if I can do it again. Um, uh, no, it's an emergent phenomenon, so it's not a goal that you reach. And this is the same, and Maslow kept saying the same thing with self-actualization. You don't ever become self-actualized and then win the video game of life. Like, it's not how it happens. Um, it's an emergent, it's something that emerges. It's a state of consciousness that emerges um, from a full integration. Like, when you're in um, the flow state or when you're in um, what Maslow called peak experiences, um, when you have a peak experience in life, you feel this oneness, the sense of wholeness that you very rarely feel in any other state of your existence. And it turns out that um, it's very hard to feel that full sense of satisfaction if you don't have a larger connection to um, the rest of humanity. It really is this um, connection of your whole self with none of your deprivation needs kind of um, screaming at you, you know, um, is one way of putting it, um, integrated in seamlessly into the world. So one self in the world um, has no barrier. Um, so that's the, in a nutshell. Thanks for asking. Thank you. Have we got another uh, hand in the air somewhere? I saw, I saw one. Yes, just here, sir. Would you like to? Can we have a microphone down the back? Thank you, Olivia. I know some of this. <laughs> I know some of this sounds a little bit woo woo. Like I'm like owning that um, because <laughs> I'm writing a book. What do we call transcend? The new science of self actualization. So my fellow colleagues might roll their eyes, but I want to be very clear that like I've been really trying hard to like scientifically study this stuff mm -hmm. and place it the woo-woo on a solid empirical foundation because there's a lot of wisdom in the woo-woo. Mm. And I think <laughs> psychologists, psycho do you know what I mean? Psychologists are so quick to dismiss the woo-woo. And I say, well, instead of just dismissing it, why don't you study it? Well, it's, can I just ask, isn't that what happened the first time around with Maslow? Wasn't it's exactly what happened. It's exactly what happened. With Timothy Leary and there was a, a, an well, issue? Well, Timothy Leary, rightly so. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> but, but Maslow, you know, and he, he, he fabricated data and, and mm. rightly got. Uh, but, but, but absolutely with Maslow, people mm. dismissed so many of the ideas of the humanistic psychologists because they weren't scientific. So I said, well, let me, let's see if we can put this on a scientific. Okay. I just wanted to say. <laughs> it, it, is is now. Woo -woo. it is now. <laughs> First, sorry, I should just ask if that was the name of the website. The Wisdom website, in the woo -woo. Woo -woo. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we've drawn your attention to it. So that happens awesome. to me, that happens to me <laughs> five <laughs> times a day. That happens. To Excellent. Me. Everybody gets a laugh. Yeah, I don't get jokes. Yeah. First, I feel like I need to ask you to sit in place of Maslow and accept my apology for ignoring him all these years. Oh, um, I got the business version of it, and, and it you. didn't resonate with me I, at I all. I do feel and like um, a kindred spirit with him, and I feel like he's smiling that you said yeah. that. I, I visited his, um, I went on a journey, I visited his uh, daughter and his granddaughter. Um, he would write in his personal journals about how his daughter, Jeannie, was the greatest source of his peak experiences. And uh, when he died, she was only two years old. And he would say, like, I wonder, like, I, it kills me that I won't be able to live to see what she's like. So I tracked her down, and I, like, hung out with her. And wow. I feel like I said, I cried with them, and I said, I feel like I'm part of the family. And they're like, stalker. No. <laughs> <laughs> <They're> like, okay. <laughs> Call the cops on me, and I was in jail. But... Um, <laughs> 
No, I, 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 but no, but that's joking aside. I did cry with him and said, I, yeah. this, I felt such a connection to your grandfather. Yeah, so he would it's have really fascinating. That. You're, you're talking right along my thing. What I wanted to share with you is, is I finally know who I want to be when I grow up, and it's my eight-year-old granddaughter, mm. and she has just such an amazing perspective on life and how much mm. joy she brings in the room, and she's just there. I mean, she's just. I know. And I want to be her. So, I appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. What a lovely comment. Thank you. And you know what's beautiful about that? What's beautiful about her is she's being. You know, I, I really do think we need a psychology of being, just to balance out. You know, not to get rid of the psychology of goal achievement, but to balance it out. That's all. Yeah. Put one here and then down the front. Hi, I'm excited by your book. I'm looking forward to reading it. I'm hoping you have a chapter called "The Woo Woo at Work," <laughs> or if you could speak a little bit about, to that, um, how practitioners in corporate settings can like whole self and people, uh, basically every word that I said in my talk today I'm sure would, people would roll their eyes at the words themselves. But if we look past the words, um, I think that in a work setting, um, really targeting the whole self is so, so important because targeting the whole self does it, is not an additive thing. So I'm not talking about, um, you know, a lot of whole place models in the workplace, they, they think it means, oh, we'll add, you know, we'll give you this need or, you know, autonomy plus connection. Plus, we, just, we just add up all these things in the soup, you know, we get a brilliant sort of creative workplace. But what I actually am focusing on is the integration aspect of it. Um, Robert Ballerin, for instance, does really great work in the field of positive psychology on harmonious passion versus obsessive passion. Um, have you both have heard of that uh, distinction? And uh, harmonious passion um, is when you're uh, motivated and you have a passion or love for something, but it's in great accord with the rest of your life and the rest of things that you're working on in your life. And there is this great integration. So the thing that you're doing, you feel good about the thing you're doing. Again, you could have growth mindset. Of up the kazoo, but don't feel like the thing you're working on or growing in um, is not worth it. You know, what's not worth doing is not worth doing well. You know, um, so um, uh, that was a Maslow quote, I should say. <laughs> Before I don't want to start stealing Maslow quotes, but um, uh, so um, in the workplace, it, it, it's it, it's a matter of um, choosing goals wisely choosing the right goals, the right goals that are fit for your, um, uh, your most um, authentic self, but, but, but they're actually, we can unpack what that means scientifically. I wrote an article called Authenticity Under Fire, where I kind of talked about the latest science of authenticity and what does that mean from a scientific perspective to be your true self. I concluded, first of all, there's no such thing as your true self. Um, so again, like I, um, oh, that probably won't be, ha people won't like me for saying that, but um, there are um, selves that we have, sub-selves, that make us feel most alive and energized. And, and targeting that, targeting those selves in the workplace is really important. And there are certain things we can do to constantly live our purpose in a way where we feel like an integrated self. And things you could do to just kind of constantly check in with your employees. You know, are they moving away from that center of, um, of, of that highest self? You know, and I, so I really do think there are things to do. I'm working on a coaching program uh, with the company BetterUp um, about this, around this stuff. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.